Recently, Bruce Willis was diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about what is frontotemporal dementia, how does it differ from the most common type of dementia, Alzheimer's disease, what age does it usually happen, what are some of the classic hallmark features, and what parts of the brain are affected. First of all, frontotemporal dementia is often referred to as FTD for short. It gets its name from the areas of the brain that are most impacted which are the frontal lobes and the temporal lobes. So if we're looking at a brain here, super duper fancy brain, the frontal lobes are affected in frontal temporal dementia and the temporal lobes, which are kind of like just below your temples. When the frontal part of the brain is impacted, it often affects a person's behavior, personality. They usually do things that are considered impaired or socially inappropriate. They might do things totally out of character for what they would normally do. It's also the part of the brain that's responsible for planning and judgment and reasoning. And so those are types of areas where somebody would have difficulty when the frontal lobes are involved. It would make it hard for somebody to be able to manage their own finances, manage their own medications, be able to make decisions or keep multiple parts of information in their head at one time. The temporal lobes of the brain make it so that somebody is able to identify objects that they see. It's responsible for retrieving memory. It's also primarily responsible for language. And it's responsible for language in different forms, meaning being able to speak as well as being able to understand. If you recall, several months ago, news outlets came out and said that Bruce Willis was diagnosed with aphasia. Well, aphasia is not actually a diagnosis. It's a condition of another diagnosis. So we're just now finding out that other diagnosis happens to be frontotemporal dementia. And aphasia is a condition of language where the person might have a hard time speaking or understanding. Now, now there are three different subtypes of frontotemporal dementia. The first subtype is the behavioral variant of frontotemporal dementia. This subtype really involves changes in personality and behavior where the person might have disinhibition, meaning they might be impulsive or have some inappropriate behaviors. They may lack social etiquette and they're kind of not able to pick up on the social cues and norms happening around them. They may also have apathy, which is basically just lack of motivation or interest in activities or things that they even used to enjoy. They just kind of no longer seem to be interested in anything. And also they tend to lack insight, otherwise known as anosognosia, where they don't really seem to be aware that they have these limitations. There's also the semantic primary progressive aphasia subtype of FTD. So in the semantic variation, the person has a hard time identifying objects and people, but their language abilities might be okay. They might have some word finding difficulties. So they might look at a marker and not know it's a marker. They might look at you and not know who you are, not recognize you. In the non-fluent variation of primary progressive aphasia, this is where language abilities are really pronounced. They have a hard time forming sentences. They may have totally incorrect grammar. This is where they might leave out words that are important to a sentence, but just use certain words of a sentence, which makes it really hard for the caregiver to understand what they are saying. So for example, if they're trying to say, I want to make a phone call, they might just say, make call. And the caregiver is left trying to figure out what are they really needing to happen? What are they trying to say? While behavior change and language changes are the most predominant symptoms, especially in the beginning, other symptoms such as memory impairment can come out later on in the disease process. FTD tends to be diagnosed at an earlier age than Alzheimer's disease. So most people with Alzheimer's disease get diagnosed after the age of 65, whereas most people with frontal temporal dementia tend to get diagnosed around age 50 to 60. People with frontal temporal dementia often tend to have a lower lifespan than those with Alzheimer's disease as well. It's hard for anybody when their loved one gets a diagnosis of dementia. And while I certainly would not wish that anybody get a diagnosis of dementia, I am super grateful that Bruce Willis's family has come out publicly with his diagnosis because it sheds light on a another type of dementia that often 
often does not get the attention. And so I appreciate that. It's an opportunity to have more people understand there is more than just one type of dementia. There is more than just Alzheimer's disease. And the way they look in the beginning can be a bit different. So for example, in frontal temporal dementia, usually we're not gonna see a lot of the memory impairment that most people would expect if somebody has dementia. Careblazer, if you have any other questions about frontal temporal dementia or another type of dementia or any of these subtypes, you can go ahead and leave them in a comment below. I'll be sure to review them and do future videos on any of the common themes that you may have. I'm sending you so much love. If you haven't signed up for your free class on how to care for a loved one with dementia without the overwhelm, dread, and confusion, there's a link for you below this video. Take care. Sending you love. Bye. Also, Nico gets a belly rub for every person who subscribes from this video. So if you haven't already, click the red subscribe button. It's totally free. And Nico says thank you very much.